Right, hello, here we are again. Um, today I'm going to do just a very little 8x10 oil painting with, um, with knives. Um, what I'm going to do is, this is a picture of, um, that's Len Callen, that's the two Arenigs, um, mountains in the background, um, north, central North Wales, just on the edge of Snowdonia, and, um, it was late afternoon, I was just coming back from the coast, late afternoon, the sun's just coming down, raking across those stones, catching the, um, catching that there. Now, I've done this picture, and I won't copy it faithfully, I'll do my own interpretation of it. Um, it's a lovely area, I love Snowdonia. And, um, right, so, before I start, I will change stuff about. Um, I won't put so much detail into the trees there. Um, I'll shift those rocks about, because they probably are shifted about by now with all the ins and outs. It was very hot summer that year, I think it was 2010 and a lot of this is generally under the water line but here we go, uh, one thing I will leave out is that pylon there um, I don't see the point in leaving it in, it doesn't do anything for the balance of the picture so here we go, my palette today and it is a palette, it's not a bit of glass, is titanium white, cadmium yellow, raw sienna, burnt sienna, raw umber, burnt umber and Prussian blue. And I'll be getting everything out of those colours. Um, I'll just take the photo away and there we go, I'll put it on top so I can see it. And um, off I go. What I'm painting on is a piece of hardboard cut down to 8x10 and I've stuck some canvas over it. There's some little bubbles in it but they should vanish by the time I've finished painting. So here we go. First knife is that one. I'm only using about three. I'll use, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six knives out. Um, but I won't use all of them, I doubt. I like this one, and I like that little one as well. I'll probably use that one, that one, this one, and I probably mix paint with that one. Okay, but I'm mixing paint with this now. Starting off, titanium white, into that some Prussian blue, and you can see from that just how strong a colour Prussian blue is. So I'll put some more white into that. I'll have to squeeze out more white after. So I want a sort of fairly pale blue sky. I don't want it quite as boring as it is here. But I don't want the sky to take over the picture. So there, nice summery blue. This canvas, by the way, has been, well, linen. I think it's an old sheet, if I remember right. It's had it's been stuck on with PVA glue, mixing some more white. It's been stuck on with PVA glue and it's also had a coat of PVA to seal it afterwards, which is probably why it's gone all woggly. But by the time the paint's soaked in and the oils come out of it, it will be okay. It will flatten. I'm doing a lot of flattening with the knives now. 
and if it doesn't work all I've got to do is take it off the board stretch it put it back on again there's very little when it comes to working in oils that you can't put right again for that corner Taking it just slightly over the um, the line of the mountain. So I've drawn it in, by the way, quite lightly. Yeah, you can see the lines with um, a mid-brown coloured pencil. I've used coloured pencil as opposed to graphite pencil because it's. Um, It's made out of pigment rather than graphite. I'm just mixing a lighter version just to go behind the um, the mountains at the top there. Something stuck. just to make some cloudy effects like I say I don't want it um, too detailed the sky just don't want it complete flat blue I want to break it up a little bit and also give the impression of a little bit of movement in the clouds because we're talking about North Wales here very rarely without a wind right there we go that's that I'm gonna work my way down now and using that blue I'm gonna mix in some of the burnt umber just a touch to get that nice distant sort of colour and that is for I'll mix some into the white a bit
Now I'm going to do the furthest peak for once of a better word. I always get these two mixed up. One's a Renig Bark and one's a Renig Vower, which is bigger Renig and little Renig, but I can never remember which one's which. Because the one closest is always the biggest. So sometimes little Renig looks bigger than bigger Renig. So there you go. And uh, that's that. Now we'll put Big Brother in. Poor little brother. Now I'm going to put quite a lot more detail in this. So at the top, just to warm it up, I'm putting a tiny touch, that much, raw sienna into it. bit more umber just to take it further away go that's that bit now there's a nice warm heathery bit in the middle so I'm going to put some of the raw sienna which is the closest thing to a red that I've got mix it into some of that blue a bit more real blue I like painting on, this is the equivalent of a 
linen canvas it's got a very tight weave and as I say it's actually an old sheet um, primed and stuck on stuff but it's got a nice fine tooth to it and there's just enough to scumble over bits should have used a darker paint just to demonstrate that so you can leave raggedy bits or you can press a bit harder and blend it all in quite smoothly tiny touch of raw sienna going up there sort of mixing on the canvas I've got something stuck on my palette knife now this mountain falls away into cliffs so I'm mixing a darker colour burnt sienna and prussian touch of the burnt sienna into it you a nice reddy browny colour and now I'm going to put in where the cliffs fall down well they don't fall down they have fallen down over the past several millennia what I love about mountains is they put everything in perspective I mean I haven't been able to get over there but the mountains don't give a damn about Covid or people being ill or people losing their jobs they just stay there for millions of years one thing I heard years ago which gobsmacked me completely is that they actually move very very slightly all the time because the the rocks are worn away by rain and sun uh, rain and wind rather and they just move by millimeters a decade well maybe a millimeter a decade it's quite scary when you think about it I think it is I'm concentrating now so I'll shut up I'm using raw sienna and Prussian blue to make this sort of faint greeny colour which I'm going to put on the bit that goes away
that is a very old knife and it's actually slightly bent so it's scratching a little bit so I'll use this one instead tiny touch of cad yellow into that just to greenify it and give a hint of texture right now How's that wrong? I need to put in where it gets very cliffy up there. into my shadows that's Prussian blue and I'm blending it in to the under colors to make it even more shadowy got me drawing wrong now but as I'm working with water with watercolor with oils and a knife it doesn't really make much difference because you can just bung it in anywhere you like any time you like Just 
just mixing up a paler shade of this to come forward needs more red by which I mean burnt sienna which is the closest thing to red that I've got well on my palette now I've got dozens of reds really more of the blue and the burnt umber some cliffy bits and over there I'm trying not to put any detail as such in this because I don't want detail I want it to be a bit hard and blocky because you must never forget that beautiful as they are these mountains kill people every year like I said they don't give a damn about anything There, that's that now in between the trees there's another little hill which goes along here somewhere so I'm going to put that in next I'm going to mix up into all this mess here I'm going to mix up a sort of orangey bit and that will go across the bottom of there And with having that little bit of reddy brown in it it brings that forward against the blue
in there. Put a few highlights. And a few darky bits. I don't want that quite as dark as that. So there we've got that lumpy bit there and coming across here we've got quite a light bit of sun on it so I'm going to bring in some cadmium to make a much grassier green. If you see all of these paints they're all basically in the same mix so I can go back and because I'm just adding stuff to the mix it will all hang together so much better so now me greeny bit There's a bit of sunshine just coming along there. Add some to that dark there, take it back, and mixing up if I can without getting any different paints out a heathery colour, which ideally I should have some uh, alizarin for, but make do so I'm getting down there a greeny purpley colour put some more red into it some more blue white just to lighten the whole thing up well it's not very purple but it's warmer than the other stuff
sorry I've gone quiet, I'm thinking. I'm a bloke, I can't do two things at once. Right, now, I'm going to mix up some greens, proper greens. To do that, I'm using the cadmium going into the greens that we've got. Some more of the blue to make a darker version. Some of the raw sienna, touch of blue into that. Prussian is a very, very, very strong colour. Yeah, that's better. So there we've got three or four different greens all sitting there and some blues around the back of them. So I'm going to do using the lightest green and mixing up a little bit more of it and here I'm going to put in some fairly thick textured because this is all trees but I'm not going to paint 4,000 different trees and what I'm doing is sort of dobbling it putting the lights in first To, do, to get that effect I'm just sort of, I've got quite a bit of paint on the paper and on the canvas anyway so I'm just pulling the, the knife off, I'm putting the knife down and then pulling it off to get spikes. some of the darker colour now
So there, we've got several sort of layers, for want of a better word, of paint coming forward, lots of different textures. I'm just doing a few more lighter bits of tree. You get the counter change between the shadows in the background and these light bits of tree in the foreground. Now I need to put in a sort of beachy bit. That's raw sienna, a bit of white. And all along that lakeside there's a flat bit and take the bits off because now I need to clean this Uh, it's a bit manky for doing the water, so I'll just an old rag and away you go. That old rag used to be Rory's duvet at one time, never mind. Um, right, okay, so now I'm going to get some almost pure white. I'm going to get a roll. And then Sky colour. Now just to reinforce that line the beachy bit I need to draw a line you get a roll on the side not working uh. Booger My hands are wonky for some reason tonight. There. Nope, not quite. There. That's got me water.
done it again. Go flipping heck. There, that'll do. Now we'll bring this water forward. Now, ah. right, I've just restarted the recording. If there's a little jiggle there, it's because I turned the camera on and off because. Everything I've done, so this for ages has all gone funny. Either stopped halfway through or not recorded properly or whatever. So I'm being very careful. And trying to make sure this one does go all the way through. Now, what I'm doing on my palette that you can't see is mixing up a big warm colour for the foreground it's both siennas burnt and raw and I'm putting a touch of the cad and a touch of white I've moved sorry so there we go got that and I need to get recession into this so I'm putting some white into the furthest bits. I need to bleed that down to the edge of the lake. by putting the white in there and adding a little bit more colour as we come forward still the same colour as the two siennas Color. Paint's a bit thicker.
I'm leaving some green flax in here because there's bits of new grass blowing blowing growing from where they've been blown because this bit was riverbed not that long before this riverbed lake bed and if it got low enough you'd be able to see the village at the bottom that was drowned so the dear people of Liverpool could have water that didn't have to cost any English people um, homes which is very nice a very generous bunch us Welsh This is just one of a whole chain of reservoirs through North Wales all the way from the far end of Snowdonia to Bala where at various times villages have been drowned to make way for water Uh, not in this one, but there's a legend or a story that won't go away that when they filled which one? The one outside Bala. There's a legend that couple of old folk snuck back in sat in their houses while it filled and drowned don't know if it's true it's a lovely story though I wrote a short play about it once and I just remembered when I was teaching Right, now we're getting somewhere. Now, I'm going to start putting in blobs of raw umber mixed into this colour. this funny shaped one so I should be able to make fairly small shapes
Right. I'm going to turn you off for a minute because I can't reach that bit. I need to put something in the gutter to lift my board up. So, I'll... what I've done is I've put this piece of wood across the gutter so that I can actually reach the bottom of the um, bottom of the canvas without getting in the way. So, back to putting in shadowy bits. These rocks in the foreground are absolutely huge. You can't really get the effect, but they are, some of them are really big. And they look a bit like pebbles when you paint them. Right, now, to get this sunshiny colour, clean off a bit of palette. Cadmium, white, cadmium and white mixed together and into that put some raw sienna which gives us a nice sunny rock colour I'll just put some indications of light you've got to be very delicate with a palette knife it looks as if you're just slapping everything on if you press too hard you end up mixing with the colour underneath.
mix a sort of very light greeny colour which I can dottle into that is the really big rocks so umber and some Prussian I've gone quiet again, I'm thinking. Very easy to bog this bit up now. Now it's practically finished. I just want to put a little bit of texture on the flake. And to do that, I'm just going to, I've got a little roll. And I'm just going to hopefully put some very thin lines across. With a little bit of texture. And a 
some white put a little bit of texture there a little bit of shadowy colour I just want to put a little line under those trees Just putting little bits of texture in this farther bit of beach, further bit of beach. Right, I think I'm going to leave it there. Um, it's got what I wanted to show, sort of. Um, just loosen this a little bit. And we can go... There's the sort of trees which are blobs, then we've got sort of light bits behind some more trees up there, that distant mountain as you come across you've got a broken bit um, I could do some more with that cliffy bit there could do some lines in that um, Yes, I will. Just a little bit of texture. And then we've got more of the same going over there. Just zoom out. You can see at the beginning, you've got the beginning at the front. You've got the water, shadows underneath the trees. The water's very simple, just the odd line. Then we've got these rocks on the foreshore. And then, yeah, looking back up there, I'm going to have to do something with it. So. Focus on that bit. What I'm going to do, 
I'll mix some white into the various greys and browns on the palette and I'm going to take the picture away and just Oops. Just a little bit more texture in the hillside over there. Um, I think I'll put a little bit more texture in that bit too. that'll do it I'm definitely stopping now in a minute yeah that's got it so there we are Um, Slyn Callen, for want of a better word. And that's that. That's all for now, folks. Hope you enjoyed it. Hopefully you've got a little bit of something from it. And um, I'll see you next time. Okay, thanks. Bye.